and hello to our first segment, which is called the Crossroads Post. It is uh, expected to bring some fresh facts and short analysis on recent events in international relations. For the first uh, segment, we have chosen to take on uh, the elections in Bulgaria and in the Republic of Moldova. We decided to talk on two countries that we are very familiar with. For I traveled to Moldova a couple of times. I reported from Moldova a couple of times. And Vladimir is located in Bulgaria, spent all his life in Rusa at Bulgarian-Romanian border. Uh, so uh, we are going to talk about two countries that are very rarely present in big international media, and yet they present a very interesting case of how the olig oligarchy appeared on the ruins of the Soviet and socialist system, how did the society react to this, and what new political developments are now taking place in countries that were supposedly dominated under by one oligarch and where nothing interesting was going on for years. So Bulgaria and Moldova, uh, they are not quite uh, apart from one another and they have some similarities in their political and social realities. For example, uh, as Malgujata mentioned, oligarchs have been strong in both countries. And also a few years ago, in both countries, banks were virtually robbed. So billions of dollars just disappeared. And uh, uh, there, the people of those countries have been emigrating for a number of years to Western Europe or to other places, looking for better conditions of labor and uh, life. So Bulgaria and Moldova have something common, but also there is an important difference. Bulgaria is part of the EU and NATO, which means that it is settled in the West. And Moldova has been for a long time on the margins of uh, this division line between so-called West and so-called East. So let us start with uh, those elections now. Um, Magujata, you observed closely the elections in Moldova. What are your conclusions about the results there? And can we find, we, sh we have to think if there is something common or different between Bulgarians and Moldovans when they vote. Okay, so first of all, we are really dealing with a historical election in Moldova. For for the first time since Moldova is a parliamentary democracy, a single party gained more than 50% of the vote and will be able to rule independently without setting up a coalition or without looking for support in different parliamentary groups. And even more, the winning party has the president in the presidential palace. For Maya Sandu, the current president of Moldova elected last year, is the real leader of the winning party. And the winning party's name is uh, Party for Action and Solidarity, which um, and the Western media like to call it simply a liberal and pro-European organization. It is liberal indeed, let me just say it straight away, and it is indeed pro-European, so the label is not that, f that far from reality. The other political camp that got 27% of the vote is the Bloc of Socialists and Communists, and here, to understand what this group really is, we have to depart from the name they use in politics. We are, uh, they call, in fact, they call themselves uh, conservative socialists, and uh, this is more this is more close to reality and as uh, the communist party is nothing more than a simple uh, post-communist organization deprived of any ideology and definitely not willing to set a socialist revolution in the moldova and uh, these two blocks monopolized the campaign although there were there was a myriad of smaller groups competing and uh, the only Party apart from them that actually managed to get any representation in the parliament is Shore Party, which is a typically or oligarchical group of interest, uh, not even not based in the whole country, uh, which is centered around the um, Ilan Shore, a business, an Israeli Moldovan businessman who a few years ago was involved in the scandal 
that Vladimir talked about, so the theft from the Moldovan banking, banking system. What is so important? Uh, Vladimir said that uh, Moldova used to be a playing field for Russia and Europe, the area where the two big geopolitical powers like uh, rivaled for influence. Uh, the result of the elections shows that for the moment Moldovan society is definitely looking west, towards west, and definitely is much disappointed with the pro-Russian socialist camp. For in the past elections, let me just remind, the two blocs also came to the top, but the difference between them was absolutely marginal, and uh, so the parliament even could not work normally. So, as I said, we have 52% victory of uh, the pro-European camp, and we can say that the Moldovan politic is now having a new towering figure. Maya Sandu, 49-year-old economist educated in the United States, is now the person with whom most of Moldovans see connect hopes for a better future of the country. And here I think I should stand for a stick. I should make a pause for a moment for current affairs and say how catastrophic is the state of this country at this point. So let me just say that Moldova ranks first in the infamous ranking of the poorest countries of Europe. Uh, it is losing population and a really catastrophic pace because some 30-40% of uh, the citizens that live there at the beginning of the 90s have already emigrated or are cir circulating between the country and abroad. Uh, the public services are in really outrageous state and uh, most of the citizens, most of the young generation is also planning to leave the country because they see no possibilities for uh, the future. Um, so can I intervene here to ask you something? Um, in what way Sandu represents a real hope for Moldovans right now? So they, they have voted massively for her, so maybe there is some hope right now. What is this hope? Uh, Maya Sandu's main slogan during the campaign, Maya Sandu and it's her party, she is formally no longer the member of the party as she is the president, but for Moldovans it is obvious that she is the leader of that camp. So their main slogan was anti-corruption and finding good people for the government. She promised that the oligarchical networks that existed in Moldova over the last 20 years will be finally dismantled and the country will be ruled by honest and good-willing people. This is basically what she said after the victory was proclaimed. That finally we will be, that the thieves are finally out and good people will be running the country. Let me just remind you that two years ago, in 2019, uh, the US and Russia made a, made a surprising deal to uh, have a coalition government in Moldova, the coalition of the pro-liberal and pro-Russian forces, uh, to get rid of Vladimir Plahotniuk. He was the guy who actually ran Moldova for the previous uh, for previous years. Uh, he was for officially as the leader of the Moldovan Democratic Party, but in fact he was the our most powerful oligarch controlling most of the state's economy, uh, most of the private business, and definitely most of the country's politics. When Maya Sandu is now saying that she is able to dissolve the networks, the clientelist uh, groups that he set up, she is really incarnating the hope of Moldovans that the oligarch's shadows will finally disappear from the country. So I see here something similar with Bulgaria, where also um, uh, two oligarchs have been recently sanctioned by the American side, by the USA, and uh, their uh, bank accounts were somehow taken out of any possibility for interaction, for transaction with the world, uh, because anybody who, who is dealing with them is threatened by American sanctions as well. And uh, this happens also in the context of the fall of the GERB government, which took place uh, uh, in April. And uh, uh, there were snap it, there were elections in April, in the 4th of April, which didn't lead to the formation of a new government. And uh, as a result of that came the snap elections on the 11th of July. And uh, uh, 
uh, we'll see what will be the outcome of those uh, uh, negotiations, which probably will take place now. But uh, for the time being, it looks like Bulgaria, Bulgarian political culture is plagued uh, by a, a thinking which is uh, in English maybe could be explained as my way or the highway. You know, uh, so when um, the the parties often are of the type of a leader party, so there is a strong person who somehow uh, is representative of the party, and uh, um, the he, he the, the culture does not facilitate so much dialogue, or at least the leaders are not thinking about dialogue. They are thinking about what they where they stand. Uh, I think and, uh, it is another similarity between Moldova and Bulgaria because, uh, both, as you said, the countries, uh, no, the parties in, in Bulgaria are leader led organizations without the culture of dialogue. And uh, I think that this polarization and unwillingness to talk is also seen in Moldova. And here it brings out even, I would say, even tragic outcomes because uh, the top political parties are mainly discussing geopolitical questions uh, without sticking to uh, down-to-earth problems of the ordinary populations of their country. Uh, I said at the beginning, for instance, that Maya Sandu's party is a pro-European party who stands for closer cooperation with the, U the European Union and the US. Sadly, the European Union is not willing to cooperate more closely with Moldova. Uh, the, European Union in, the European Union, in my opinion, is now wants to contain Russian influence in Moldova and not allow this country to slip away from Europe, but is definitely not willing to accept this extremely poor country uh, with unsolved border question inside the community. And the same thing applies to Russia. For Igor Dodon, uh, the leader of the communist socialist camp and the former president of Moldova, uh, uh, promised his people a closer economical cooperation with Russia and participation of Moldova in Eurasian economic initiatives. But at the same time, Russia did not really have intention to support Moldova or to invest in Moldova or to help Moldovans get out of poverty. And uh, during the campaign, it even turned out that they did not really support the Don, so the politicians who is, who, who is justly labeled a Russian person. Uh, let me just remind that during the campaign, uh, Russia, uh, the Russian politicians did just uh, endorse some of those statements about American embassy interceding in Moldovan politics. And they offered one transportation of the vaccines into Moldova, which did not really mean anything substantial as another transport of vaccines was ensured by Romania. So, yes, you uh, mentioned Romania and I wanted to ask you something about that because Romania... Uh, is also another important country in Moldova for a number of reasons. It's the cultural similarity or commonness, if you wish, between the two, the majority of Moldovans and Romanians, or it's the economic interests of Romania, etc. So, uh, how is, um, what does this election mean for the unionist tendency which uh, Romania has been promoting? Unionist tendency or the movement to get Moldova and Romania connected, rebuild a great Romania from uh, the interwar period when Moldova or Bessarabia actually was indeed a part of Romania, uh, is an interesting phenomenon, but is not a prevalent force in Moldovan politics. Uh, I know from Moldovans I spoke to, uh, I know that uh, the, many of them actually think that connecting to Romania could be a good scenario, but on the other hand, they think that Romania will not accept Moldova inside, uh, will, uh, does not really want a union. And Moldova is, so, excuse me, Romania is already an influential economical player in Moldova, the most important Moldovan banks being in Romanian hands and uh, a set of other former state-owned enterprises sold to Romanian entities. Uh, Romania is also promoting cultural unity. It was seen in 2018 when there, were, there was the 100th anniversary of Moldovans' incorporation into Romania, uh, when indeed uh, a series of um, 
a series of events connected to historical memory was held in the Moldovan capital, Chisinau. Uh, nevertheless, uh, I think that Romania is quite happy with what is hap what happened now, with the strongly pro-European campaign installed in power in Moldova, with support of the most of the population, and it's not going to uh, do any further steps in order to incorporate Moldova. And uh, yet another thing I feel that is often lost from the um, from uh, from the horizon. I'm not really happy with the fact that our conversation uh, went into this geopolitical direction because, as I said, uh, for Moldovans voting for Sandu, it was not the European uh, European direction uh, that was the main argument. I think what they liked most was that she promised honest country and honestly run administration and punishment for the most corrupt figures of the previous government. Because I told you that two years ago, the top uh, oligarch of Moldova was forced to leave the country. He fled, but his party still was left left inside, and many of the Moldovans are still afraid that Vladimir Pachotyuk is somehow orchestrating his return to Chisinau, and that his networks are still in place. Uh, so... Um, I can uh, see course, something similar happens in Bulgaria, uh, because uh, you know that um, there were protests, anti-oligarchical uh, protests in the summer of 2020, and uh, as a result of that, the government of Boyko Borisov fell. Uh, also, uh, I mentioned that a, an important oligarch called Delan Pevsky was sanctioned by the USA. But in spite of that, uh, the developments which have been going on this week with the winner of the elections, the party, there is such a people promoting, uh, proposing a government with important figures who have been associated with the party of the um, a former king, and uh, with uh, the governments in which he ruled together with uh, the party of the ethnic Turks, from which is Pevsky, and the Socialist Party. Uh, these uh, developments somehow suggest that uh, there is still a lot of work to be done if really those who want to take the oligarchs out uh, to uh, want to uh, limit their influence in society. And... Uh, my guess is that uh, we are maybe we are rather observing certain realignment of the oligarchical interests in these elections, which have been going on since 4th of April. Uh, but we still don't have the tools with which uh, the oligarchical influence can be really reduced. We rather replace maybe one uh, interest with another. It is interesting what you said about replacing interests because, uh, well, the new ruling elite of Moldova is claiming that they are going to be the honest people, they are going to dismantle networks rather than sub set up the new ones. And indeed, it would be hard to name a new oligarch, a new potential oligarchs that could emerge from that camp. However, that does not, does not mean that there is a radiant future in the front of Moldovan people because uh, what Maya Sandu did not say during the campaign is that Moldova is almost surely going to undergo very uh, strict reforms in line of the um, agreement with International Monetary Fund. And, and it is strongly possible that the country is going to look for money for uh, economic recuperation after the pandemic by cutting spending on both administration and healthcare and other, um, other public services that are already on extremely low level. And uh, so it may turn out that uh, Moldova will indeed do some steps forward in fight, fighting corruption in its most basic form. But on the other hand, the further liberal reforms will not get people out of poverty, as the corruption is really just one of the one of the problems that Moldova is facing. Well, in the case uh, of Bulgaria, corruption is a big issue, but uh, also uh, attempts to fight corruption have not been very successful. And rather, I one guess is that uh, it is used anti-corruption is used as a slogan 
for certain uh, again the placement of one interest in the judicial system with another so but that is an issue which we may discuss in future uh, certainly there will be developments thank you for uh, this participation right now in the first segment and we'll see our listeners and viewers in the second one <laughs>